Hi, I did a video on my main channel about a do-it-yourself uh, PCB light box like this and the results were <laughs> surprisingly very good. A box just uh, filled with high CRI color rendering index uh, LEDs all around the side and just uh, all alfoil in there just reflecting everything around. Now, um, I got really good results with that. And uh, by the way, some people uh, pointed out, I uh, try and use a black background. So I actually uh, like a black bottom uh, for the uh, PCB under there. So I tried to use some black cardboard, which looks really black but when you get it under um, actually really intense light like that black cardboard's not actually black as it turns out and the results are quite poor so anyway um yeah you'd need a really vanta black is it anyway that's super black the world's blackest black or something anyway what i wanted to try to do instead of actually having the owl foil in here which actually just reflects the light all inside and then having the leds of course are on top they're shining directly down onto the board, I thought I'd also try a solution where I, instead of the uh, the lights being directed straight at the PCB, which can give some, you know, quite harsh shadows, actually, I originally thought about maybe building a frame in there or something, maybe like, you know, this high or something like that, and then have the LEDs, like, shoot out at an, like, up at an angle, and then it, like, reflected off the side, so it wasn't actually directly coming down on LEDs, and I might uh, try that, but I thought I'd try a simpler one, and quite a few people uh, suggested this, and I, I that was my original uh, thought to do something like this, but anyway, I thought that I'd try, um, just get some white paper, and actually whack that inside there, pointing outwards like this, point and it just reflects off the uh, paper. Paper should be good enough. It's not, once again, it's like the black thing. It's, you know, it's not perfect. You might have to do some white, uh, you know, you can build like the box out of like white Teflon or something uh, like that. Just like those integrating uh, spears and things like that. Um, spears. Spheres. <laughs> pronunciation Dave uh, and my mate Doug Ford's actually got one of those integrating uh, spheres and I've always wanted to um, go to his place he's now moved uh, so he's much further away but always wanted to go there and do a, a video so give a thumbs up if you want to see uh, Doug and his uh, integrating uh, sphere that'll be fantastic anyway they're covered all in white so that's how you do uh, lead measurements anyway so I thought I'd do that um, so I've constructed because I have leftover bits like a ring of leads like this and sort of you know it's got uh six sides like this and it's yeah, it's not quite a circle it'd be better if you got like flex pcb but anyway i've dismantled uh a commercial uh studio light here and i've got these strips so i'll do something like that and i might uh, sort of I'll mount them up off the uh thing somehow and then just it the light will bounce out from these hit the white and then sort of like bounce everywhere else in the box that's the plan anyway. So, yeah, I know a lot of it will go through the paper and it'll be absorbed into the cardboard of the box and stuff like that. So it won't uh, be, it probably won't be as bright inside um, as it would with the LEDs directly down, but that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to give that a burl. So once again, uh, they're all in series. It's all a bit how you're doing because it's just an experiment. Uh, no spit and polish in this. So around about, you know, 35 and a half uh, volts, something like that. Yeah, once again, 500 milliamps. So I'll do a before and after photo. So I'll do a photo with uh, my aluminium foil, the existing uh, box, as we built in the first video. And then I'll whack this in there and see what that's like. Actually, what I might do just for kicks uh, first is actually uh, leave this like on the bottom like this and then I'll put it in my uh, alfoil reflective box and see what, you know, I'll just see how that works. By the way, I've sent my uh, camera, it is a fixed F10 like last time, but I've set it to uh, spot metering mode now. So it'll meter and expose on the uh, actual piece of it itself. So yeah, I'm just going to whack that on top. Ooh, that looks interesting. Let me show you video camera and that looks pretty jazzy doesn't it no problems there at all i'm not sure uh, like i'd have to get the meter in there to see i think we had eight thousand last time it won't lux it won't be oh well, well let's try it i've got the meter there you go eight and a half thousand uh because you know the box is mostly reflective not a hundred percent but yeah that's basically very similar to what we got last time so there's not much loss in there that's interesting. Um, of course, I expect that to be lower once I use the paper because um, that won't, because uh, it's not as reflective. 
Uh, but anyway, it remains to be seen. Uh, by the way, my video camera is set to a white balance of 5,000. That's what my studio lights here are. So the color of the board uh, will look a bit different on the uh, video camera as opposed to the 5600 that I've set on my stills camera. Okay, just for simplicity's sake, I'll just leave the LEDs on the bottom here rather than, I was going to like put them up the top and like hang them from the top of the box, but uh, it's just easy to do an experiment like this. So let me whack that. So I still got the reflective coating on the top. So I still got the alfoil reflection on the top, but with the white paper now instead of uh, the reflectors on the side. Well, there's an unexpected result. We've now got over 10,000 lux in there just by adding the paper. That's really interesting. So is the paper a more effective reflector than the alfoil? I, I don't know, maybe, but yeah, wow. Okay, <laughs> check out how dark this looks without the uh, top reflection <laughs> down there with it, you know, without it uh, bouncing around from the top really is uh, very different but yeah and maybe the white paper on the uh, top of the box would give even better or even more light if it is actually better reflector than the alfoil but anyway let's give this a go actually come to think of it i don't really expect that to change with the leds much with the leds down the bottom or at the whatever height those leds are there i don't maybe it's not going to make a huge amount of difference because it's you know the fact that it's coming out bouncing off the walls and bouncing 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 and eventually gets on the board at a <laughs> in this case a higher level higher lux level than what we had before I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference there hmm all right i've gone full on how you doing look at this <laughs> I just taped it like, you know, like inch from the top or something. So it's it's not round, it's not anything, it's just a blob. Anyway, I'm just going to shove the box on top of that and uh, see what happens. Well, as it turns out, look at that, 15,000 lux. You've got an, an extra zero to that. So that is our highest yet. So <laughs> putting the uh, leads at the top, you know, about an inch from the top, something like that and uh with the paper and i've still got the alfoil on top here i haven't used the white paper so wow <laughs> let's give that a bell time for all you severed dave head fanboys uh let's have a comparison here okay on the right side here i have the original alfoil one so i took the photo again this is not the photo i took the other day so this is with like like a center spot meter in so they should be exposed you know, and they look to be exposed uh, pretty much the same, which is fantastic. So this is the original uh, one with all the alfoil reflective stuff and the LEDs pointing directly down onto the PCB. I think the Raspberry Pi is a better uh, example than the other one, but we might have a look at the other one as well. And on the left here, we've got the alfoil, same alfoil box, but instead of the LEDs pointing down, uh, directly down from the top, they're on the bottom. They're sitting like a rest surrounding this board on the bottom. So this is like, you don't even have to like really construct a light box. You can just have like a ring of, uh, you know, a flexible lead ring around the bottom of your board. And just anyway, um, yeah, so this is still a reflective box with the alfoil. So can we actually see a difference here? Well, it looks a little, if you look between the uh, AV connector here and the uh, camera connector, it looks a bit darker in there, doesn't it? I'd say, than the lead ring around there. So maybe that's because, you know, it's pointing directly down and it is actually creating a few little extra shadows in there. But apart from that, geez, I'm not really picking it. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, you can see the shadow on the board here. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's showing up on the screen. You can see the shadow around the edge of the board. You don't get that shadow on here. So if you're doing background image removal uh, with the white, uh, as you do for like product images and stuff like that, and places like Amazon uh, will like automatically uh, remove the white background and stuff like that. This is actually going to be better. Although, is this one a more vibrant color? Maybe. Uh squint and hold your tongue at the right angle i like i don't know like there's not much in it is there apart from 
probably the lack of shadow around the board. I yeah, I I prefer the lead ring around the bottom. I think the Broadcom looks a little bit brighter. The logo on top of the chip, yeah, there's very little difference, is there? That's amazing. Light directly down or light literally from the bottom of the board, the base of the board reflecting out and then up and around and everywhere else. And there is a difference in how the top of the connectors are lit. For example, they're sort of like brighter here. So I think, oh yeah, down in there, are those joints down? Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit more shadowy. So yeah, I really like the LEDs around the bottom. I think that's a winner winner chicken dinner. That's an improvement right there. Don't have the LEDs directly pointed at it. And I thought that might be the case because when you have lights directly pointed at them, it creates shadows. Regardless of how many LEDs you've got all the way around, you're going to be creating uh, shadows. So it's just nicer if the light just starts from the bottom and then just bounces around everywhere. Isn't that neat? Sorry about the slight angle misalignments for those uh, OCD inflicted. This was done manually. I haven't uh, rotation corrected any of these images. I've done no correction at all to these. These are images straight out of the camera. Now, uh, what we've got now is the same lead ring uh, bottom with the owl foil. And now this is the lead ring still on the bottom, but with the paper. And let's see if we can pick a difference. And really, I, I wouldn't expect there to be any differences here at all no the brightness of the top of the connectors over here is the same the shadowing down here in between those connectors is the same i'm not picking it so it looks like it it makes no difference at all uh, nah i uh, leave it in the comments but i'm not picking it so it looks like it makes no difference whether or not your box is coated with alfoil or it's coated with the paper. But as you saw in the Lux measurement, it looks like you got a brighter image with the paper. So I'd recommend the paper instead of the alfoil, just because, well, you get more light and more light is more better. -er. And uh, by the way, the more light you have, then the larger the um, f-stop you can have and then the larger the depth of field you can have. So the top of the connectors will be in focus and the bottom components there will be in focus because if you just let the camera do automatic and it's shooting at a low, very, very low f-stop uh, value, then, you know, like the tops of components will be out of focus and the board might be in focus and, you, you know, it's just really annoying. If you don't know all of my videos, are actually shot with a constant aperture. I might shoot like, you know, F7 or something like that. So when I'm looking at a board at an angle, I've done videos on this, looking at the board at an angle, most things in the board appear in focus. Whereas if I shot at a low f-stop value, then the front of the board would be in focus and the back would be out of focus. And that, that's all arty-farty, but it doesn't make for a good PCB video shot, in my humble opinion. Leave your own comment down below. But yeah, I, I'm i not going to pick that. You know, check out, like, in check out, you can see, like, the little hair on the board. Look at that. You can see the little hairy scaries. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, there's, uh, like, I'm, I'm not spotting a difference there. There is going to be, like, a slight angle difference with the camera because the board maybe wasn't in the exact location. So slight angular differences uh, for those playing along at home. But yeah, there's nothing in that. Makes no difference. Um, paper or alfoil? No. Nah. It's the fact of putting the leads on the bottom that made a, you know, a noticeable difference. And now the one on the right is the same. That is the lead ring on the bottom of the board, uh, bottom of the box with the paper surround. And this one on the left is the lead ring at the top with the paper. So let's see if that makes a, any significant difference. And once again, I'm not seeing it. Wait, like you'd expect maybe to see some board shadowing, perhaps. But once again, I'm not seeing it because the leads are not directly down. The leads are pointed outwards like that, and they're reflecting off the white walls and then bouncing around and then coming down on the board. So the conclusion looks to be fairly solid that it is better to, of course, and it's fairly obvious to uh, point the leads outwards and not have them directly on the board. Um, but I just wanted to experiment with that in the first video. And yeah, uh, true to form, like anyone who designs light boxes and professional lighting, they know, yeah, you diffuse, having the light bounce off the walls. For example, like I do that here in my videos. Uh, for example, when I say I'm shooting the whiteboard, which is over there, I won't have and necessarily have the uh, studio lights directly on me because that casts shadows. I'll like point them up at the uh, roof and then I'll bounce it off the roof and stuff like that. And it just gets more diffuse uh, light. It's not direct harsh light coming on me. 
So there you go. That's um, not necessarily surprising, but yeah, it does give a noticeably better result, I think. Not massively, but little, you know, small, like shadowing around the board and stuff like that. Yeah, it matters. But it doesn't seem to matter whether you have the lead rings on the top or on the bottom. Seems to make no difference, really. So in this case, you could just like uh, stick paper to the walls of the box, and I might do that. I might rip my alfoil out and actually stick uh, paper to the sides of the box, and uh, it would just with some uh, glue stick stuff like I use with the alfoil, and that'll work. That'll work a treat. Um, and uh, once again, I won't do any experiments with white paper on the top. I think it's potentially going to be like slightly smidgen better than the alfoil, but there's probably no difference. So it looks like to do this, all you need is a white, a suitable white box with white paper walls. It's going to be better if it like has like you use a, some sort of te white Teflon box or something. You know, you could really go uh, fancy pantsy or, uh, you know, just paper on a cardboard box and that's it and just buy a lead ring strip which goes around the bottom and you don't even have to mount up in the box you can just mount it on just put it around the board that you're actually uh photographing this is it's too easy and just briefly, there you go for those who want to see the other uh, card that we saw before. The one on the left here is the original alfoil box coming down. You can see, as I said before, the shadow uh, from the connector there. You know, that was all fairly obvious. Little, you know, a bit of shadowing behind the HDMI connector here and stuff like that. I don't notice really, no major shadows for the large... Uh, radial caps there but anyway this one on the right is the uh, same alfoil box but with the lead rings on the bottom pointing outwards instead of directly down and as you can see like it's look the a the can the metal can on that is much better lit maybe slightly better on that chip i don't know but oh geez yeah it's better and you'll notice that there's yeah that you can really see the board shadowing on this one check it out Right, with the leads directly from the top, and that's what you'd expect, of course. And but the lead rings on the bottom, just moving them to the bottom. Wow, that's nicer. And yeah, it's potentially not as dark under there, although there's probably not much in that. Maybe around the caps is a bit better. We can actually zoom in on that using Earth and View. For you Earth and View fanboys, will go wild. Love Earth and View. Can't be beat. You do everything in Earth and View. Like I don't use like Photoshop. Like, Earth and View everything. It's better. There's bit more, I think there's slightly not as dark around there, although that could be my imagination. Yeah, it's not as dark. There's traces are brighter, aren't they, on, on this side here. That's not my imagination. The copper shows up slightly differently. It's a bit brighter here. It's a bit duller over here, maybe, but... Oh, here you go. Oh, look at that. I didn't notice that. Wow. There you go. Now, this might be... The slight differences in the camera uh, tilt, um, that can matter a lot. But we can really look at the number sta really standing out on that oscillator there. Here, can't see it at all. So I'd have to like experiment that to see if it, you know, because only slight, I've had a lot of experience, with only slight differences in angle can make the difference between C and that and not. So I'm not going to call that that is a result of having the LEDs on the bottom. But it seems to be more consistent. But yeah, this is, yeah, the, the, the chip here is darker. So this is the light coming directly down. It's actually, you get a darker chip and you get more contrast, I think, between your silk screen and your package there. So yeah, definitely. It's, the packages appear darker. Look, I'm sure you can find pros and cons with each one, right? You know, there's probably not some absolute perfect way to do it but i'd say yeah it, it seems like just to get rid of the shadows uh, around the board for starters and uh, less shadows on large uh, components and things like that um definitely the lead ring pointing outwards to a paper or a white painted box or you know some sort of poly put the kettle on plastic uh you know white plastic box or something like that any sort of white reflective box but even our foil works a treat. So there you go. I hope you found that an interesting little update there. If you want me to do more tests and things like that, please leave it in the comments down below. As always, if you found it useful, give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.